understanding the lyrics to that song. So we're going to sing it again. We're going to start off there. We're going to start off in a place that says, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. That's for anybody. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Cause he picked me up, cause he picked me up. He turned me around, he placed my feet on the solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior. Because he healed my heart, he changed my day. Forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the master, I thank the savior. I thank God. Oh, I thank God. Oh, I thank God.
morning. If it was not for him, we would not be free today. Oh, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
Sometimes we may not be motivated to be disciplined. But it's not about the motivation, it's about the consistency. It's about putting in the daily effort of giving our all to God. Just to be completely transparent with Him on what is going on. Because the thing is, is that he knows what you need and he knows your heart. He knows the things that you yearn for at night. He knows the things, he sees your tears. But he really wants his people to put him first before any of that stuff. Because the thing is, is that as humans, we have a fallacy of wanting things here on earth. But see, he wants eternity for us. He wants more than just today or tomorrow. He wants the forever with us. So the problems that are holding us down today or the things that are, that are feeling like making us feel heartbroken right now, they're tiny dots in existence compared to the time that we will get to be full of joy and happiness with our King. It's about letting go of the things that we think we need on earth. And it's about grabbing hold of the things we need in the spiritual with God. So if that's something that you are struggling with this morning, I want to just say that the altars are open. If you need some one-on-one time with Jesus right now, is a really great time to come and open yourself to him. Just completely surrender everything that you, that you have to him. The things that you're scared of losing control of. Finances, relationships. family members jobs positions because the one thing that you need to be grabbing hold of is God not these things here on earth because this is not our home isn't it good to know that this is not our home This is just a stopping point to eternity.
To you are 
everything. Father, Lord, we exalt you. We give you the praise. You are beautiful. You are glorious, God. We praise you, not just for the things that you've done, but because of who you are. You are El Shaddai. You are Jireh, Heavenly Father. You bring peace in the times of turmoil in our heart and in our mind, God. You provide for us in the times where we feel like nothing can help us. Heavenly Father, we give you the glory because you are glorious. You are mighty, you are beautiful. You are the God of all the universe. Heavenly Father, we are but humans that just want to praise you and worship you and give you all of the glory, Heavenly Father. We surrender our entire hearts to you this morning, God, because we know that your plan that you have for our lives is bigger than our five-year plan, Heavenly Father. That the things that we try to do for ourselves are not as much as what you can do for us, Heavenly Father. just the voices one last time God you're so good oh God you're so good oh God you're so good you're so you to look at your neighbor and say, God is good, isn't he?
Hello, welcome to Living Springs. We're so happy to have you here. Here are your announcements. Prayer in the Plaza, Tuesday night, 7 p.m., Plaza Shopping Center. Discipleship classes every Monday night, 6 p.m. Church business meeting in the Fellowship Hall, August 21st. Ponds, August 21st, 5 p.m. Guest speaker, Jessica Valencia, August 28th. We're so glad to have you here. Enjoy service. Good morning, everyone. It's offering time. All right. I was, uh, the, this last song that was being sung, there's that line at the very end of one of those segments of it that says, God deserves the glory. Amen. Well, this morning we were, in Sunday school, we were talking about the 111th, 12th, and 13th Psalms, which talk about that subject and the importance of it. God's a jealous God. He doesn't like for things that belong to him to be given to someone else. Glory is one of those things. It's not that God deserves the glory. The glory is God's. And we do well to remember that and give him the glory for everything that happens in our lives. Um, I thought that was important to bring up because it, it really struck me as I listened to the song today. Giving him honor, respect, glory, Fear of the Lord, there's a, a, in one of those psalms it says that fear of the Lord is joy. Now that fear doesn't mean that you need to be afraid of him, unless of course you're doing something that he doesn't want you to do. But if you have a reverential honor and respect for God, and if you admit to yourself what he deserves from us, your life will be better. When you, as as uh, Jesus said to Paul on the road to Damascus, you know it's tough to kick against the pricks, and and he was saying that I've been trying to get through to you for a long time, and he wind up basically striking him blind while he was traveling to Damascus. Now he found a way to, Jesus provided a way for him to get past that. But God will do the things that he needs to do to get our attention so that we make some changes. Amen? Amen. All right. It's offering time. I hope you all are ready. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you in this place. Thank you for bringing all the people that have come in today. We ask that you bless them for being here. We thank you for the gifts that they bring to honor you and to please you. We ask that you help us to receive them and use them exactly how you want them used, that you would be glorified by the things that, are, that happen and are done. We thank you. Multiply them to meet the, meet the objectives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. the
Amen. <laughs> Man, if you can't get up and get down with that one, come on, y'all. That's, that's a church song right there. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, leaders. Thank you for everyone that's pitching in every single Sunday and Wednesday and all those days in between that nobody else is watching. Amen. Except Jesus. He is watching. Amen. He is. So good to have everybody here in the house today. Let's give the Lord an applause this morning. Thank you to everyone watching by Facebook. We're so glad you could be with us. This is the day the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice. I don't know about you, but I said I'm going to rejoice a little bit because God knows how to do a thing in the world. You know, we face trials of many kinds. Come on. You know who you are. But can I tell you that God's right there every step of the way in those trials? Amen. Yesterday we got to be out there amongst the people, and that's a good place to be. Thank you again, Taco Tijano, uh, for opening your doors to us to come and minister to some people. Yeah. Thank you. And the prayers that we got to pray over people and defeating all the people, what a blessed day. What a, what a thing that God did. Amen. All the leadership that put that in order. Thank you, board members. Thank you, Teresa, for opening your doors. Thank you guys so much for all who came to serve. I want to hear some testimonies sometime about that. We're going to get into it, amen, because God's going to keep doing things like that, amen. When I showed up yesterday morning, I was a little bit discouraged. I've been kind of talking to my wife and just kind of feeling a little bit blue. I don't know if you ever had a, a day where you feel a little bit blue or not. Sometimes I do. Um, and I was just feeling a little bit blue. I said, Lord, just stir me up. You know, when you feel that way, you can talk to Jesus still, amen. Yeah. And when you start to call on his name, he starts to do something inside of you. Amen? He does. When we call on the name Jesus, His Spirit starts to come near to us. When we draw near to God, the Word says He draws near to us in those moments, and a good thing happens. Amen? You don't start feeling so down anymore, so down and out, so blue in the face. Amen? Something starts to spark inside of you, and life starts to happen. Amen, Mitch? Praise God for what He can do in a moment in a person's life. Amen? I'm just one lonely preacher in the world, amen, but he's going to call us all, amen, home one day, and I pray that spark of life is inside every one of you. I mean every one of you, and you may be coming some, from some discouraging things in your life, but I'm here to tell you that God is good. All the time he's good, and he knows how to speak to our hearts and our lives and change things, amen. He's, he's, he's every moment I believe in this place that God is effective, amen, through our worship and through our word, thank you again to everybody for being here this morning. We just bless you in the name of the Lord. Today we're going to continue in our conversation in the book of Exodus chapter 14. This chapter has been speaking volumes to me over the last couple of weeks of my life as I started just reading it verse by verse. How many know that when you read something verse by verse, it starts to pour a little bit more into you? Yeah, you can read the Bible in chunks and, and big pieces, but I tend to like to slow it down a little bit and get some more of that. I want to chew on that word from my life. Amen. I had a brilliant pastor. He said, man, I don't read the Word and study the Word so I can preach. I, live, I, I read and study the Word of God so I can live. Amen. And out of that living comes the testimony. And out of that living, amen, in the Word comes the preaching, comes the power of the Scriptures. Amen. Faith by works, amen, in our life, making it self-evident who we are. God, through this chapter and this verse, these verses in Exodus 14 have been speaking to me. We left off last week. Uh, reading through verses 15 and 18. I'm going to pick up today in verses, uh, that's going to be verses, oh, it'll be 15 and 18. That's where we're going to be today, 15 and 18. And so thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's pray today, Father. We thank you so much. Thank, come on and pray with me. I pray so much better when you pray with me. Thank you, Lord, for the word today. Thank you for the excitement in the house, God. Thank you for people who've come hungry. Hungry for more of you. Hungry and ready, Father God, to go share the gospel. Hungry and ready, Father God, to go lead somebody to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God, for those that are here, led by your Spirit, empowered by your Holy Ghost. Amen. Father God, for the good things you have in store for them, I thank you, Father. I thank you for this word that, that is manna to our soul, bread of life, Father God, unto us so we can live. And, Father God, out of that living comes a testimony of power. Father God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day that you've given us and everything in it. And I thank you, God, for the good soul. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And if God is good. Come on, man. I'm telling you. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Encouraged to come to church. 
I'm encouraged to come to church. Let me tell you something. Palestine, Texas needs to know that you can come to church and be encouraged. Come on. There's a lot of people in this city that all they think about church is in a negative way. Huh? That's all that they think about when i got to get up and go to church. Something bad's going to happen to me. There are Christians who act that way, man. There are believers in Christ, born again, covered in the blood believers that believe all that's going to happen in church is something negative. I'm going to show up, somebody's going to say something about how I'm looking today. I gained a couple pounds. Yeah, I know it. I know it. You ain't got to tell me, right? Yeah, you know what? <laughs> you know what? I ain't, move, I ain't moving as fast as I used to, but listen to me. I'm still here, all right? I'm still doing it, and so are you. Church is a positive thing. Why is that, Pastor? Because when we come together and we say these words of encouragement, when my brothers and my sisters lift me up, when I sit there at that front door and I say, hello, and they greet me back, man, that love exchange, something's happening in that moment, man. Right? I don't feel so bad about the extra pounds i got to work off next week. Right? Or how tired I might feel. Because God is working by His Spirit. He's working by His Spirit, not the flesh. Get out of your flesh, church. It's real easy. Get out of your flesh. It's going to lead you astray. You're going to say and do things you don't want to do if you're in your flesh. It happens every single time, 100% ratio. But can I tell you, when you get in the Holy Ghost, man, revival things can happen in your life. The Spirit can start to stir you up, man, and you want to kick it high and jump a little bit, man, for Jesus. And tell somebody about that goodness in your life. I don't care what age you are. I don't care how much weight you got to lose. God is good when we stir ourselves up. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Exodus 14. Let's get there. Amen. 15 through 18. The Lord says this to Moses. Why do you cry for me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff. Come on. Stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. That the people of Israel may go through the sea on some dry ground. What? This is unknown territory. We've never been here before. And I will harden the hearts of the people. They shall go in after you, after them. And I will get the glory. When I have gotten glory over the God is building something here. Amen? Amen. God is building something here. He's building a moment for His people to believe. Say believe. believe. you got to believe in what God says to you in your life. If you never pick up what God is laying down in front of you, amen, your life is going to be miserable. Anybody miserable here this morning? Come on. Hey, let's go. Picking up some faith, amen. you got to pick up what God's laying down in front of you. Here's my comment to you today, and I've been, t- I've been telling some people this this past couple of weeks. I've been waiting to say this line so somebody would write it down and tell somebody else. Why are you going to build a ship? Why do you want to build a ship when God wants to part the sea? Come on. Why do we want to do it our way, in our strength, in our flesh? God is saying to Moses here, I put a staff in your hand, son. I gave you some authority to speak to things in your life, including yourself. Because those people, all those people out there, those hundreds of thousands of people, that all they see is doom and gloom and death, you've got something to say to that, and it's me. I've given you promise, amen. I've given you hope, amen, past what anybody else is saying to you right now. I am God over your life and your circumstances. And if he's speaking, amen, you better be listening when God speaks because he's putting something in your life that's going to change the dynamic of everything that you are, everything that you say, and everything that you're going to do. Stop building your own ship, amen, when God wants to part. The water is right in front of you. The staff of glory is in the hand of those who are righteous priests and kings in Jesus Christ, amen. You have authority that you don't even recognize yet because you've been trying to do it yourself. Huh. Man, I'm a guilty party. <laughs> Try to get in that place of just trying to figure it out myself and, and working these things out in my life, man. Man, I get tired. I get weary. Anybody else can testify that maybe a little bit? But the first time that I put it before God, when I put that thing down before the feet of Jesus, man, and he says, thank you, sir. I'm glad you're finally listening. 
That thing starts to move in my life. There's a dynamic. There's a shift. There's a change. There's a paradigm taking place in my life, amen, that I desperately need, and you do too. This is the age of the greatest awakening of the church that has ever been. We're fixing to see an outpouring of the Spirit. Put your ears on and listen to this. We're fixing to see, but not just see, but be a part of, amen, take a step into something that's way beyond anything we've ever seen before. These Israelites, at this point in their life, were about to experience that same dynamic. We have never seen this happen before. Ever. How is this even possible? Can you fathom? Amen. See, logically, we want to try to put all the pieces of our life together. If I do it this way, then this will work, and then this will work, and I can, man, the numbers look right there, and guess what, you know, that person right there, this person right there, and everything should be fine. Sounds like a great plan, doesn't it? Amen. And everything should work out, just like we planned it. But can I tell you, in my life, I've not seen that happen, not once. There have been things in my life, trials in my life that have come unexpectedly. Oh, my goodness. Wow, didn't see that coming. But God says, I did. I saw that coming. What he's wondering is if you heard him six months, a year ago, when he was talking to you about it coming. Amen? You see, all of Moses' life was leading up to something incredible. From being raised in an Egyptian culture that was led by many gods, all false, to being in the middle of a murder case. Can you imagine running for your life because you just killed somebody? Going and finding a, a foreign land, a foreign land where you know nobody, but God's driven you out, and you find hope because you find a family. Come on. I sense family in this room today. And then God's starting to speak to your heart, building up your most holy faith. You know what? He can even put bushes on fire and talk to you. And that's crazy talk right there. But through all those things, through Moses' life, there was a building of faith for this very moment. Amen? Why build a ship when God wants to part the sea? Where does your hope rest in times of need? I pray you are fully committed to Christ. I pray you're long, completely committed to our Heavenly Father and not against Him. So many Christians, all they think about church is something negative. That's all they think. That I'm going to come here and something bad is going to happen to me. And here's the thing. It's, it's true because they're not listening to what the Spirit has to say. And they don't know how to fight spiritually. All they know how to do is fight in the flesh. That's the problem with the world today. You see, when God raises a standard, amen, it's not going to be in your ability. It's, gonna, it's got 100% to be in His. That's why the God of all life knows how to sustain His people. But check this out. And make a way that there, there's no way. Moses was learning in this moment to lead as a general in faith in the most powerful army ever assembled, which is the army of God. You, Christians, are a part of that army. You are assembled, amen, for something that's decadent, beautiful, lovely, but also something that's warring, amen, that's trying and testing, amen, something that will change life forever in your, in your world. The first step of this is this, keeping your eyes, amen. If you keep your eyes on your enemy and always keep you past defeat. If you're looking at the things that are wrong in your life, it'll move you past yourself into defeat. If all you ever see is trouble, despair, and gloom, that's all you'll ever have. The enemy of your life keeps somebody enclosed into that place, entrapped in that place, enslaved into that place. You must learn to fix your eyes on Jesus. That's step number one. You must fix your eyes on Jesus when the days are long and the nights are even longer. It's been dry. We've been going through a drought. Man, I've been praying for rain, and guess what? We're going to get some. Amen? But we had to stick it out till we get some. Amen? Y'all hear me? Y'all feel me? In our spiritual life, it can be like that. You can feel real dry and empty on the inside. But when somebody comes to you and they extend that word of grace into your life, amen, saying, listen, I see the God-type things in your heart. I see, amen, how the Spirit's moving in you. Man, I'm encouraged by your life. I'm so proud of you. Man, you are encouraging me. Thank you so much for how you live your faith out. And that person's like, 
doing? But here I am, man. Yeah, I must be doing something right. And all of a sudden, that person gets encouraged. They want to say, hey, pastor, man, he was like super encouraging a while ago, telling me about how good I was doing some stuff. Man, did you realize that you're doing some good stuff too? Right? And how that, that, uh, that thing just becomes effective and powerful. And it's almost like this, this addictive sick situation that starts to take place in life where all we want to do is start to encourage one another. He knows how to come against that. That's why he puts these little lies in our heads to start to try to think logically about circumstances. Man, I'm here to tell you, if you don't start looking in for the cup, are we good here on this, this microphone? Do I need to get Royston? Do I need to go this one? All right, here we go. Y'all ready? Check, check. Turning this one off. We're still testing stuff. It's okay. God's good. But I want this thing inside of me to spill over into somebody else. How about you? I want this Jesus thing inside of me to start to be something that's so intimate, personal in my life. Something that raises a standard around everybody that I meet. But I need encouragement too. I need things in my life that will give me hope. I need words of encouragement from you. Just like you need words of encouragement from this pulpit. God knows how to communicate and build his people up. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Hebrews 12, 1 through 2 says this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, guess what? Amen. That's you. That's you and all of your brothers and sisters who have gone before you. We are one body of believers. It says, let us also lay aside every weight of sin which clings so closely. Put away those fleshly thoughts. Put away that sickness and disease. Put away those things, amen, that try to hurt you. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to who? Jesus. Somebody say amen. Why? Because he's the founder and perfecter of your faith. Amen. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He did it because he loved you. Amen. And he did it in all joy because he knew that you would experience life by his sacrifice. Despising shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God for us to know that he is praying for us. That he is an advocate for us. That he is engaged with us in all these things. We must fix our eyes, amen, on the one who is to come, who is I am, who is the beginning and end of all things. We must fix our eyes again, church, on Jesus, on Jesus and him alone. We must, we must, it's a must. Stop looking at the world. It's so tempting to look at the world. I know it, I realize it. Young people, man, the world's right in front of you every day. Older people like me, right, that's been gaining a little bit of weight, (laughs) The world's right in front of you tell you you're no good no more. But I'm here to tell you that you're worth every bit of the good. Because of God in you, you have purpose by design, victory by design in Jesus Christ. Second thing is this, step two, keep moving forward. A little hot on stage, guys, if you can help me out there. Keep moving forward. The enemy can slow you up if he will, if you'll let him. The enemy will always try to put a stumbling block in front of your life. Listen to this. The highway of the upright turns aside from evil. Whoever guards his ways perseveres in his life. Pride goes before destruction and haughty spirit before a fall. Lord, let us not be like that. Proverbs 16, 17 through 18. God is teaching us from years and years ago of experience with his creation to say, Listen, I've made a way for you that burns bright in the darkest of hours that you can stand hold fast, amen, to the things that are in me. Jesus has made a way, amen, by giving us hope in all things. Turn away from the ways of the world. Fix your eyes on Jesus and keep moving forward with your life. Yesterday was a testament of us moving forward in the things of God, amen. If you were there, you saw God in action through his people. If you were there, you were probably doing something that enabled, amen, the Holy Ghost to have a moment with somebody in Jesus' name. There's one sister that came up, amen, friends with Stephanie, that's been dealing with cancer. Man, I'll never forget that moment of prayer with her because I believe God has healed her. And then when she goes back, amen, to get a test done, that some some doctor somewhere is standing right in front of her and say, Sister, I don't know how this happened, but you are completely well of this cancer. With all my heart, I believe that, Amen. No more wigs, no more hats, amen. No more, no more chemo. Because God can still do a thing in the earth, people. 
If we simply say, yes, Lord, I will obey you in this moment to pray and speak your name, there is power there that transfers through a worthy vessel called you that God will use. Amen. Stop not believing that stuff because it's a lie. And if you let the devil let you tell you that, that's what you're going to believe. Half of the church, maybe even more, has stopped believing that God can do the things He says He can do. We have got to have correction in our lives and preach the gospel everywhere we go. And that means every synagogue that we step into. Amen? Amen. And there's some devils that need to be cast out when you get there. Amen. First miracle in the book of Mark. Check it out. Jesus knows how to build faith. And unity. And I see that across this congregation. You may have come in here this morning a little bit discouraged. Come on. There's somebody here dealing with this. I want to tell you that if you'll just fix your heart and your eyes on Jesus again. Listen real close. And it just, it's, it's real simple. Stop looking at your trouble. Stop looking at your problems. Stop looking at your checkbooks. And start fixing your eyes on Jesus. That's the key. The answer is so simple, laid before us from the foundation of this world. Jesus has always been the answer. And that's never going to change. We don't live in a pluralistic salvation process. We live in Jesus. And it's by Him, amen, that we have life. And life abundant. John 10.10 10 says that the enemy goes before us as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But Jesus says, I've come to give you life. Life abundant. Amen. If you want to stay on track, you must learn to walk outside of pride in your life. Because pride is exactly, amen, what the enemy wants to instill inside of you. Pride was the fall of Satan and his followers. It was the fall of Adam and Eve eating the forbidden fruit. And pride is the building of a tower to reach God. Pride let Jonah flee from God. Pride was Naaman's refusal to get into the water. Goliath's judgment of David. The golden statue of Nebuchadnezzar. Herod ties to being God, tries to be God. Pride is Judas' is selling Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Pride is, is hidden in the disciples that follow Jesus Christ throughout Scripture. Jesus is beaten and mocked by the guards because of pride. Saul persecuting the church. Simon the magician tries to buy the Holy Spirit. Pride in your possessions. Pride in the good gifts that God has given you. Loving yourself more than God. And Pharaoh refusing to listen to God when he said, let my people go. I'm going to tell you this morning that there is liberty for those, amen, in Christ Jesus because he set the captive free then and today he sets the captive free now. Amen. God is who he says he is all the time, every day, 365, amen. I believe in Jesus Christ. How about you? The third thing is this. Do it God's way. Do it God's way. So many times, like I said, we want to build our own boat. What if Moses, who is coming from an Egyptian society, they were builders, man. Have you seen the pyramids over in Egypt? They know how to put things together. Mathematicians. Don't you think he was trained in that? Don't you think he knew how to put some numbers together? He did. He was well trained. Well equipped for things like that. He was not a stupid leader. He might have stum he stumbled with his words every now and then, but so do I. You know what though? But in his faith, amen, God started to transition him. If the Lord tells you to stand on your head with your eyes closed and quote scripture till you almost pass out, just do it. Just do it. If that's what he wants you to do tomorrow when you go to work or you go to your campuses at school, just do it. Don't question him when he says, I've got a way. Because he is the only one, not you, not Satan, not your best buddy or your mama. And that is the way maker. When he says, I got a way, listen to him. Church, listen to him. It takes faith to do it God's way. Faith. Many times God, God's way does not make logical sense until it makes sense. Don't you know after they parted it, that, that sea, that sea parted and they started walking across dry ground? You ever been inside of a, a pond that's kind of dried up? And you get along them edges and you start sinking a little bit and your feet getting in that mud, right? And it gets all between your toes, right? And if you fall down, it gets everywhere else. They didn't even have that going on. When he made those seas part, he made it a straight path. Safe capable, able 
for every one of those people to pass except those enemies that they had. Our God is still making paths that are the most safe, capable, and able things that we could ever do. If God says, I need you to show up at church and I need you to start praying, praying, I need you to start praying, amen, I'm, put, I'm plugging this into somebody right now, I'm sending your spirit, God's already been telling you this, I want you to show up at Living Springs and I want you to pray. If God is telling you to do that, you had better start showing up. There's a purpose by design in all this, amen? If God is telling you at your place of business, I want you to go talk to this person, I've been setting him up for you to go and visit with him or her, you had better go do that. Why? Because God's going to put words in your mouth that you aren't going to speak. It's not going to be your logical way of doing it. It's going to be God's faith, blessing, promise, amen, that's going to come out of your mouth. God's going to prophesy through his people in these end days, amen, as the Spirit pours down on them. Come on, youth pastor. God's going to pour out his Spirit, amen, at them in tremendous ways, hallelujah, that youth will have dreams, amen, young men have dreams, and prophesy, young men will prophesy. I believe I'm seeing those things happen in our lifetime. I want to see more in this house. I want to see more in your life, where you work, in your schools, in your place of business. I want to see God use you in good and mighty ways, but it has to be God's way. We don't have the ability to prophesy on our own. You don't have the ability to speak in tongues on your own or to interpret them. You don't have the ability to go do works on, good works on your own. You don't have the ability to come up with good wisdom on your own. Amen? You don't have the ability in your flesh to have knowledge. That all comes from the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. That comes from having that relationship with Him that keeps us in this way of life in Christ. Your thoughts will deceive you, though. Understand this. God's Word has the power to change and transform us. Lies lose their power in the face of truth. Write that down. Amen. Lies lose their power in the face of of truth, when this gospel comes to you, all those things the enemy of your life's been telling you, they simply don't add up anymore. When the Holy Ghost becomes a part of you, and you start to recognize, amen, that thing, hallelujah, in your life, you start to line up in truth, amen, shuts the mouth, amen, of the offender of your life. He shuts the mouth of the adversary of who you are. Why build a ship when God wants to part a sea? In Peter's case, he can even let you walk on it. Come on, say Amen. Sometimes you've got to walk in faith, amen, because faith is what kept Peter walking one step at a time. Faith is what separated the ocean, amen, and, and let the people pass on through to victory in their life. And faith will sustain us today and forevermore. Hallelujah. God can do anything, anything, anytime, anywhere. Let's ask Peter a little bit. And Peter said to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come onto the water and Jesus said what? Come. 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 Church, he still says, come. He still says, come. We got to get out of the boat, though, people. Got to get out of the boat, amen, and have some faith to walk when Jesus says walk. He knows the enemy's plan before we do. Here's the question. Why would we not follow our victor into victory? Why would we not follow Jesus? In these last days. Why would we not set our foot, amen, amen, and put our hand to the plow of life that God would bless it and give us hope? My fifth point is this, Exodus 14, 19 through 20. says this, Then the angel of God, who was going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was the cloud of, and, and the darkness, and it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night long. Oh, my goodness. i got to take a little break here, man. Catch my breath and just marvel at what God can do. He's coming before us in this church. Come on, listen to me a second. If you're walking in faith in this place, amen, and you're fully connected and committed, there's a God who's going before you, amen. But can I tell you, when the adversary, the devil, comes to lay his hands on things in this place, this old boy right here, this pastor, is praying that, God, you would move yourself, amen, to the rear, that you would start to be our righteous rear guard, amen, that that enemy that comes with murderous thoughts would not have a place in this house or in your life. I am praying for you that you would not be deceived, amen, to leave the camp. Come on. Amen. You see, God protects His own. God defends His own. 
But when you let an offense come into your life and pride that comes right behind it that keeps it there, there's a death wish waiting on your life spiritually right behind those things. Because people who start to do their own thing, amen, try to be their own person, try to do it their own way. I'm going to build my own ship. I'm going to try to take as many as I can, by the way. I'm going to do it my way instead of listening, amen, to what God is saying. There's a death wish waiting for you. You've got to stay within the camp which the Holy Spirit protects. You've got to stay hidden, amen, under the hand of God himself. And if God is for us, who can be against us? But it's his way. It's his way, hallelujah. And when things start to work right, amen, we can see it start to work right. Just like yesterday, I'm going to testify yesterday a bunch. Because that was a people in the same camp coming together to do a good work for one God, by one spirit, amen. And I believe that there's more of that to come. Can I just remind you that God's got you? Amen. Jimmy, God's got you, bro. Brothers, he's got you. Sisters, he's got you. He really does. I don't think you really believe that sometime because I'm about to say it again to this side of the congregation. God has got you, people. He knows how to hold you in the palm of his hand every single day. He's got you. He is encamped around you and your house. Amen. When was the last time you prayed for angels to descend and protect your property? When was the last time that you anointed your house with oil and your kids and your family with oil? you got to stay within the camp, amen, because that's doing it God's way. That's not doing it your way. That's the Holy Spirit kind of way, amen, that will sustain you, your family, your life, your job, your career, the things God has laid before you to accomplish. It will be a promise that is yes and amen. He's got us. As submitted people, there is nothing that God will not do on our behalf if we're in Him. Two or more gathered together in my name. All we got to do is what? Ask, amen. Ask. What happened to you ask? Why'd you stop asking? Why'd you stop believing? Why'd you stop having faith? Did it get a little bit too hard? Did you say, man, I'm just a little too tired? That weight really come on me. I don't think I can do it. They're not going to like me now. I got to produce a new image. I got to build a brand, right, so I can sell my books and so they'll, read, they'll, they'll listen to my preaching and my pretty music. What happened to faith? What happened to truth? What happened to righteousness in your life, people of God? What happened to a holy standard when nobody's watching? What happened to those things in your world? What happened to that in your life when you said, I think I don't want that anymore. My life is easier this way. What happened? When did the cross get too heavy for you to carry? Because you're supposed to pick it up every single day. What happened, church? Why have you grown tired and weary? The church in Smyrna. Why? What's the problem? Are we just uncommitted? Do we feel like we can't trust anybody? Do we feel like there's hope lost in the world and it's never going to work out? Do you feel like you need somebody that's being a friend and you reject him when he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother? What's the problem, church? Why have we lost heart? Why is faith not evident in everything that we do if we know that God has got us? James 4, 7 through 10 gives us this emphasis of faith. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Amen. James is speaking from experience, church. He's talking about a God who knows how to walk through some things in life. James walked through persecution after persecution. He knew what it meant to be the brother of Jesus Christ and to stand that test of faith. Don't you feel, think he felt a little bit awkward at times around Jesus? Hey, man, this is, my, this is the guy. I gotta, I, and, and even going past that to submit to him? Leaders, let me tell you second, something. Take a lesson from James and learn how to submit to the things of the Lord. And God will preserve your life. And even more so, he'll bless your ministry. You would not, and you'll find yourself doing your own thing in your own way, pursuing your own, own secret things. And God will purge you one day. I'm telling you, every knee will bow and every tongue confess. All sin will be exposed in your life. Especially this one, pride. Pride. Let your life be transparent. Just as Jesus spoke the truth of the word to Satan in the wilderness, here James makes a statement that shows us a process for living. A process for living. What time is it? 1146. 
I got about seven steps here. I want you to write some of these things down. You may not get all of it. I'm going to move pretty quick. I got about nine pages. We're not going to get through all that right now. But can I tell you, we're going to get through as much as we can. Step one is this. Submit yourselves to God. As the Israelites were camped for the night, the angel of the Lord stood watch over them. His glory cloud shone all around. And don't you wish for the glory cloud in this, in this room, this hall, amen, in this sanctuary? Since this was a very large crowd of people, this must have been a very large angel. And the glory must have been intense, amen. Being submitted to the Father always has and always will be the safest place you could ever be. God protects those who draw near to Him. When I see people coming to these altars, amen, there was a sweet young lady came to the altar while we was, while was doing some worship. Amen for that, because that moment will impact her tomorrow. I promise you. Every time that you lay it down before Jesus, and I don't care how good you got it, you must learn to come and battle, amen, on your knees. Being submitted to the Father always has been and always will be the safest place. God protects us who draw near. As the Israelites were trapped and crying out for salvation, God made a way, amen. He stood as their heavenly defender. Somebody say, thank you, God. He stood in the gap as their own provision of hope. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. He was their way maker. Somebody say, thank you, Holy Spirit. His glory shone all around them and protected them. And this is still the case for you and I today. If you'll simply stay in the will of the Father, He will come to aid for anyone, amen, that is in trouble. If you feel like your home is under attack, call on the name Jesus. I had some friends come over just the other night. God been sending me people, y'all, to my house to pray, amen. And it's been good. I encourage you. We might even get a, a list on the back table. If you want your house prayed for, we got somebody, we got a team that'll come do that. And they do a good job doing that too. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful for people who come to my house because I know that if I let them in my home, I mean business, right? And I hope you mean business too with God. I hope that it's a genuine thing for you that you allow brothers and sisters to draw near and pray for you. He's our heavenly defender. The second step is this, that we must resist the devil. The devil deserves no place in your heart. This liar and thief only deserves the eternal death that awaits him at the coming of our Messiah. Amen. When Jesus comes, this enemy will be cast into a bottomless pit, awaiting pending doom. He gets no glory as the Israelites camped under the shadow of the Lord of God Almighty. He gets no glory in that. They came. He will send an army. But you listen to me real close this morning. If you're under the hand of Almighty God, there's not an army the devil can amass that's big enough Amen. to hurt you. Amen. 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 But yet we run and hide because of one person that says something hateful to us and hurts our feelings. Did you hear what brother so-and-so said the other day? So sad. Man, get over your pity party and start to speak faith about who you are in Christ Jesus because the enemy of your life, he knows how to get at you if you let him. It's time for change again in the church. People, listen, if you'll just speak up in faith, God will come to your aid. Call on his name. Resist the devil, amen. And he has to flee. He has no choice. Resist him in times of temptation. There's only death in temptation. Move past flesh into spirit, for God is waiting for those who would draw near to him. Hallelujah. If the Israelites had turned back, they would have missed this incredible moment of protection from God. If you ever turn back and away from God, you're trying to leave the most safe thing, the most precious thing. Church, it's our, our turn to come back into this agreement with God again and stand with Him in righteousness. You can't let sin guide your life. Sin only separates us from the Father and puts you outside in a place where the enemy can have his way with you. The Israelites, they, they were grumbling, they were complaining, but yet they were in the middle of these moments, amen, of seeing God do incredible things. Don't you know, amen, that that changed the way they thought about a few things in God. This lesson should give us hope today. Even though the enemy comes to tempt us away, God is still our path for victory. Say victory. victory. Do you want it or not? Amen. Amen. Then follow God. If he tells you to go stand in the corner on your head and pray, that's victory. It ain't your type of victory. Here's, oh, let me talk about this a second. You see, we have this humanistic mentality that's coming to the church. Follow me a second. We're about to have a business meeting downstairs. You can lay hold of this. 
We think victory is when we have all the money that we can never count in our bank accounts. We think we have victory when everybody in our family, top to bottom, is well and healthy. We think we have victory when our job just is the most perfect place. But how many of you can testify about those things that I just mentioned? That sometimes it ain't any of that. You see, the victory that we have is not based in those things. Come on, stay with me a second. The victory that we have, amen, is when we can come back to these altars, amen, and get down on our knees and start to pray to a holy God and then stand up and rejoice, amen, in the face of those things that try to come against us, in the face, amen, of an adversary that prowls around as a liar and a thief to steal our joy. We have victory when we can stand the good fight of faith, amen, right in the middle of circumstance and trial, amen. If it happened for the Israelites, amen, if it happened for the disciples on the boat, amen, there's still a God, amen, that's with us that can still speak to the waves and the wind and calm them with His voice. Amen. I'm here to tell you today that God is for you in all things. Somebody shout, glory! Glory! He knows it. He hears it. Next one is this. Cleanse your hands. Knowing that God made a way through Jesus for repentance, we have been given the greatest of gifts that could ever be given. We've been given a way of salvation from death and all due to our sin. Christ died to set the captive free. Would you be free today? God was setting the Israelites as captives, as slaves free. They were learning how to have this, this process, I mean, of learning to trust God wherever He may lead. Wherever He may lead. Some of you may be led to foreign fields one day as missionaries. Some of you may be led to pulpits as pastors. Some of you may be led, amen, to be the evangelist on the street corner or in the prisons. Some of you may be led to go to your homes, back home, and preach the gospel to your family who's lost and dying in their sin. Some of you today may get the call to be an intercessory prayer warrior in, your, in this church. Some of you may be called, listen to me, to go into the military who is that's so sinful right now. So sinful. You need Jesus. And if you're called to those places, you had better start praying for those places in your life before you had ever gotten there. Amen. God knew the way of, of things in giving the Israelites a great leader in Moses who was given hope before hope was ever needed. He does the same for us today. He speaks, amen, to save us from these things that are coming. The fourth thing is this. I'm going through it pretty fast. I hope you're staying with me. Cleanse your hands. Purify your hearts. Amen. Purify your heart. Just because you're saved doesn't mean the battle is over. Do not be deceived that there is much work to get done. The Israelites were watching a miracle take place before their very eyes. God was preparing their hearts for what was to come next. Don't harden your heart. Listen towards God or His people. I'm going to brush the microphone off so you can... Y'all hear that? Do not harden your heart towards God or His people. Amen. Folks... You have got to learn to do some things in Christ. Here's the biggest one. Here's, here's the biggie. You have got to learn to forgive. People in this place are going to hurt your feelings. It may be me. It may be me. I might walk up someday and just say something that don't even just make any sense. Right? Because I'm human too. But listen. You have got to learn to forgive. You've got to do it. We will not make it unless we learn to get along. And the biggest thing is offense. It's those little things that people say or something that somebody does that hangs on to our heart. And we let that thing grow because sin so easily entangles us. Oh, man, he still hadn't come up and said he's sorry. Well, how about you walk up and say to him that you've forgiven him for that? You see how it works. Amen. We must have clean hands and a pure heart. Amen. Church, it's time to be different. It's time to be not like the world and hold these offenses and bitterness and anger because those arguments are ended at the point of gunfare, warfare. We are called for a higher standard. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We must learn to come together as one. You must stay compassionate and kind 
Or God may put you outside the camp to fend for yourself because of your double-mindedness. Come on, is this preaching to somebody today? Man, I'm preaching to me a little bit this morning. Right? We have got to set a standard that will be something that the world despises. Let me say it again so you can amen that. We have got to set a standard in our life that the world is going to hate. How do I know that? Jesus said that they at first hated him. But don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. Amen? We must set standards that are above and beyond. Come on. The other thing is this. Mourn and weep. As the glory cloud encircled the people of God, there was mourning and weeping. They had traveled so far just to come to an end. How could this be that this was going to be the going of an end for these people? Many times all they could see, all we can see are dead ends in our life. These are the things the enemy wants you to see. But God always makes a way, exclamation point. When we cry out to our Heavenly Father, He hears us. So mourn and weep for the journey. It can be long, but surely we have not come to our end. Amen. We have only just begun. There is something inside of us that is pressing us to keep moving forward and to keep coming back for more. The battlefield is exactly what that is. Amen. We are not called to be the ones building our ivory towers on the back end, sending everybody else but ourselves to the front lines. Every single one of us have a job to do for the, for the King of Kings as He's calling us to come. Come forward. Amen. Did you know you could walk on water? Hallelujah, if you'll just come. Did you know that I can still part seas if you'll just obey? Did you know that I can still do this for you and for your family and this church in mighty ways if you'll just believe once again? Mourn and weep. I wish these altars were full of people that were praying, amen, mourning for those that are in this world that don't know Jesus. But yet we don't do that because we're too busy mourning and weeping for ourselves. <laughs> oh, help me, God. Help me. Help me. Church, we're never going to get anywhere if we keep that prayer up. We're never going to get anywhere if we don't start learning to look past our own selves. See, pride will hold you in that place of prayer. That's a prideful prayer. There ain't nobody hollering right now. I don't wonder why. I mean, that's, that's a prideful thing. See, God is going to take that off of us. And it's going to be painful for those that don't want to get rid of it. Because when God starts cutting on your life, you had better have been ready. Because it's going to happen. He's going to prune his tree. And it's going to produce a fruit for him. Not for you, for him. Amen. Amen. There's a difference. The world says do it for you. Do it for your glory. But God says, I created you so you could do it and have a relationship with me. Amen. You see, if you want to see the miracles, the signs and the wonders, you've got to do it for God. Amen. You had better have been praying for those people before you ever get there in those schools, Miss Caroline. You had better let God have broken your heart before you get there because it is not going to be easy. But the Holy Ghost goes before you, baby. Amen. To bring revival, to touch hearts and lives. Can you believe for miracles, sister? Yeah. Amen. Call those things into existence before you ever show up and for salvation being the greatest of those miracles. Yeah. I'm believing for signs and wonders at Palestine High School. Yeah. I'm believing for signs and wonders at Cayuga High School. Amen. Yeah. I believe for signs and wonders at Westwood High School. Those school campuses need Jesus. Come on. They need adult people praying for them before they ever get there. If you're not laying your, your thoughts and prayers towards these young people going and doing something, Adriano, this is a year for you, man. God says, I'm gonna, I've ordained you to lead people to Jesus. I've put something inside of you that nobody's going to steal away from you. That there's a God thing in your life right now that he's just going to keep raising up and up and up. Faith is coming on you, man. It's never going to go away. The enemy can't steal it away. You know why? Because when God opens the door to somebody's life, no man can shut it. That includes that old devil. He's going to try to come, though, brother, because you got a past. We all do. But listen to me. Don't be looking at that past. You keep your eyes fixed on Jesus and your future. Amen? That's where destiny's at. 
That's where miracles are at. Amen. And young lady, God is going to bless you too. Stay obedient. Stay obedient, right? Stay obedient. It's not about human relationship as much as it is with God relationship. I'm telling you something. This is Holy Spirit speaking to you, right? Choose God first and he'll add all these things into your life. I think I read that in scripture somewhere. <laughs> Choose God. Weep and mourn. Sixth thing is this real fast. The fake stuff can only get you so far. The fake stuff can only get you so far. We must eliminate in the church the facade that we've been carrying in this, into this place. When somebody asks you, if your one response is, when somebody asks you how you're doing, all you ever say is, I'm good. You are a liar. <laughs> You are, you are a bold-faced liar because I know that everything ain't all good. You need to change your response. The, the fake stuff is, is only going to get you so far. You hear me? Amen. If somebody wants to come up and help you, amen, come on, that pride is there. Somebody wants to come up and help you and you say, I'm good, got it. Thank you, though. You a liar. Guess what? You go past that. You're even a thief. Because somebody's blessing was waiting there, waiting to help you. You stole away something that somebody, God called them to do, and you said no, to not just to them, but to God himself. See, when you reject the Holy Ghost, amen, and all them nine gifts and them fruits, amen, hallelujah, 1 Corinthians 12, Galatians chapter 5, when you say no to the Holy Ghost, when he's speaking, let me talk to y'all this morning. When y'all get that Holy Spirit on you, man, there's a place in this that you had better start to learn how to have some obedience to. When he says speak, you had better open your mouth and speak. Amen. When he says go, you better figure out where the directions are and say, Lord, I thank you. How do I get there? Oh, he'll say, yes, this is it. He'll even let you fly airplanes, amen. amen. Never in my life thought I'd be doing that, but yet, yes, here we are. God wants to open the highways and the byways for every one of you, amen, to go out and see him do mighty things in your life. Amen. Quit bringing the fake stuff to church with you. Leave that crap at an altar, amen, and even at your house before you ever get here because your heart is ready to receive, amen, from the word of truth when it's given. Because the enemy will try to bring this block, this barricade in your life when you come in here. You'll be so mad, being out of shape, twisted sideways, you ain't listening to nobody. You ain't worshiping not one bit. You barely can hold a finger up. We're supposed to clothe ourselves in humility. I've been saying this too. Y'all listen real good. You might want to tell somebody tomorrow when you get to work. But we can barely put our, our humility underwear on in the mornings. We can, we, much less get clothed. I'm telling you, humility is going to make a way. And the fake stuff's only going to get you so far. Turn your laughter into mourning and your joy into gloom. We all hurt sometimes, but tell everyone we're okay. This is a, a detrimental move on our behalf. We tell ourselves we're tough. Keep going while God is telling us to stop and to mourn. Stop. And mourn. And church, if you're not stopping because your life's just too busy and you ain't mourning for somebody other than yourself, you are letting the enemy of your life lie to you all over again. Amen. Is this preaching to somebody today? Amen. This same stuff will only get you so far and the world will try to keep you there. You must learn to be transparent with God, yourself, and His people. Come on. Amen. When somebody asks how you're doing, you had better tell them the truth. The body of Christ is going to be this bride that is without spot or wrinkle. How do you think it's going to get that way? Huh? Amen. Because of your great works? No, ma'am. No, sir. It's going to be because of obedience and faith. There's only one thing that moves God. And listen to me. Write this down. One thing that moves God on our behalf, and that's obedience. That's it. Right? Obey. And do it in love when you do. Amen? The Israelites knew that they were out, uh, not out of the woods yet. They were in the middle of their greatest transparency moment. Either God was going to save them or this was going to be their end. And can I remind you, you can't save yourselves. You must give, amen, God, to the things in your life because He gave them the night to evaluate their hearts. Open your hearts to these things and you will discover your Savior in a brand new light. Somebody say amen to that. Man, this is good this morning. Man. Last thing is this, and we are out of time. Last thing is this. The further we bow down, the more we rise up. Put that on a sticker, t-shirt somewhere. Put it on a ball cap. 
And the more we bow down before our holy king, the more he rises us up. You must learn to live a life bowed before King Jesus. You must learn to live a life that's submitted on your knees. On your knees. The song says, on your knees, weary sinner. It says the old time preacher, amen, on your knees, weary sinner. On your knees is where you find salvation first. On your knees is where you find hope. On your knees is the place of exaltation. From that great place of humility, the church will find its greatest hour of victory. Somebody say amen. amen. Only God knows how to exalt in due season, which is coming to this house. Faith will be tested in us all from this place of humility, bowing before the most holy king. Your faith is going to be tested. Here's what happens when a, when a person gets saved. And y'all may know this. They come to a place of, of knowing Jesus. This fire is inside of them now, amen, for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden they want to go out into the world and they want to do everything they, everything they possibly can for Jesus Christ. But the one thing that they're forgetting is that they need discipleship. They need accountability in their life. Because somebody's got to remind them that you've got you to fuel that tank up again. You've got to stoke that fire. If you get this moment, holy moment with God and you go out into the world and you're pouring out those things, amen, you're going to feel a little bit empty. Ask me how I know. You have got to find yourself getting refueled, amen, at the altars. I don't see everybody up here every single Sunday, by the way, or Wednesday nights. I love you. Y'all my brother and my sisters, and I love you. But you need to get refueled by the fire of Jesus at these altars. When we worship, we're not just sitting here so we can sing pretty songs to you. You understand? Those are holy moments that you should come and get yourself plugged back in. Amen. At this altar, every single time you get a chance. You know why? Because if you've got to go out there and pour it out, amen, you've got to come back to the source. Come on. Come on. My brothers in the prison know. Manu knows. That's a hard place to work, brother. Amen. If he's not plugging in, his wife ain't plugging in, something, something's amiss, right? And the enemy knows how to take advantage of those misses. In your life, we've got to get God back into the middle of it. Amen. Amen. The further we bow down, the more we rise up. The further we bow down, the more we rise up. The greatest victory the Israelites had ever seen was right before them. All they had to do was to trust God and stay submitted in His plan for their lives. Church, what do you think we must do? <laughs> I wrote these words down. Oh God... You are the light and the darkness. Let your glory show all around us in this place. I'm going to ask the musicians to come back to the stage for a moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Let your glory, Father God, show all around us. Come on and stand with me. Y'all been sitting a while. Y'all stand up. Stretch your legs. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Just raise your hands to heaven and close your eyes. Start to pray this with me. Father, let your glory show in this place. Let your glory show in this place, all around us, God. Encamp around us, Jesus. Come on, start to pray, man. If you don't ask for it, come on. You're not going to get it. Lord, let your glory show yourself in this place. Show yourself here, Father God. Reveal yourself to us, God. Reveal yourself to us, Lord Jesus. Come on and pray. Ask, ask so you can receive. Lord, let your glory be known in this house. Let your glory shine in this place, Father. Let your glory shine at Living Springs Assembly of God. Lord, let your presence come here, Father. Minister to us here, Lord. Minister to us here, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let your glory shine around the sky. Come and shine around the sky. Come and shine around the sky. Oh, let your light shine. Father God, come Jesus, come Jesus, come in this place.
place, God. Come in this place, Father God. Come into our lives, into our homes, Lord. Oh, you see the ones who are hungry, God. You see those who are hungry for more. God, you see those who are thirsty for living water. You see them this morning, Jesus. You see them this morning just like you saw your people. Lord, you're still setting the captive free, God. And it's by way of your Holy Spirit presence, by way of Jesus and salvation. God, thank you.
prayer this morning for anything, I want to ask you to come right now. Just a few moments more, we're going to pray. Hallelujah, the Spirit of the Lord is here this morning. He is doing good works all across this auditorium, at these altars. Amen, Jesus. Amen, Jesus. Amen, Jesus. Here's what I want you to do. Here's what the Spirit of the Lord says to do right now. I want you to grab hands. Put your hand on somebody's shoulder next to you. Put your hand on somebody's shoulder next to you. Embrace that loved one next to you, that brother and sister. Come on, all across the auditorium this morning. And I want you to start to pray. The Spirit of the Lord says, pray for your family. Pray for your family. Look at that person. They're your family. They're your family. a God who gave his only son for you, that you would be saved. This morning I'm praying that if you have not ever called on the name Jesus for salvation, come on and pray for salvation this morning, those who are watching. God, if you speak to them now, and if you've never ever asked Jesus into your heart and life, it's a real simple prayer. This morning we're going to lead you in that prayer that goes simply like this. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm in need, God, of you as my Savior. This morning, pray that prayer with me. God, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask you to forgive me of my sins, to come into my heart, save my soul, that I be born again, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. This morning, I'm believing for you that if you prayed that prayer right now, that you are born again, sanctified, set free, healed, and delivered believer in Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. And we're here to celebrate with you that fact. God be the glory. God be the glory. God be the glory in all things. I want to encourage you, if you're not a part of a church, find you a good, healthy church to get in. One that will encourage you to grow in your faith. One that you can be baptized in. Amen. Not just by water, but by the Spirit. Amen. Also, I believe that this, this, this congregation, you, you are well equipped for the call now. It's your turn to go and preach the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Is it good today? Okay, amen. Amen. Okay. Then go now. Yes. Go and share the good news of Jesus Christ. Preach the gospel. Lay your hands on those who are sick and be made well. Cast out devils. Amen. Baptize those if, that they may believe. Amen. And I believe that God is doing a good work through your life. Come back and see us again. Come back and see us again on Wednesday night. Amen. At 6.30. Who can be here Wednesday night? Amen. Come on. Yeah, Overflow Youth Downstairs, Children's Ministry. God is going to bless this house. God is going to bless this house. He is going to bless this house. Yes. 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 He's coming back again. Fiery people again. Be on fire for Jesus.
because there are those of you who still not have prayed in tongues. There are those of you who still are longing for things in Him, in the Spirit. And He is going to rest in this place. He's going to rest in this place. It's like you just have to walk in and ask, God, I need this. I want to I want to I want to see this in my life. That's all you have to do. It's not complicated. Just come. Just come. In fact, right now, Lord, if there's anyone here that's not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire, Lord, let it be so. If there's anyone here that's hungry for the baptism of the Holy Ghost this morning. I saw, hey, pray and pray with me in the spirit, would you please? If you can pray in tongues this morning. We do this corporately, amen. All you have to do is ask. All you have to do is ask. It's not hard. Just ask and let God speak into you a heavenly language, amen. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Fix your eyes on him. Come on. Fix your eyes on him. He's the baptizer. Fill them with your Holy Ghost, God. Fill them with fire. Fill them with fire in Jesus' name. Fill them with fire in Jesus' name. Fill them with fire in Jesus' name. Fill them with fire in the name of Jesus. Fill them, Lord. Fill them with your spirit. Fill them with fire in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Leadership, this is for you. God says this is for you. God's called you to be a leader of all things in the church. All things. All things. All things. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord is saying, if you'll pray for revival, I'll give it to you. If you pray for revival, I'll give it to you. If you'll start to ask with fervent prayer, I'll give these things to you that you've been you've been looking forward to. It won't, won't just be hearsay anymore. God says, I'll give it to you, church. I'll give it to you if you'll just ask me. But you gotta make it real. You gotta make it fervent. You gotta ask him in spirit and truth. You can't do it in the flesh. Must be by way of the Spirit. So, God, I thank you today for revival in the hearts of men once again. Revival in the hearts of women once again, God. I pray for revival in the hearts of men and women in this place, in this city, God. I pray for revival, God, by way of your Spirit and truth in their lives in Jesus' name. Let it come, God. Let it come. Let it come, Jesus. Let it come to your people. That we be ready, made ready, Father God, by your Spirit. Speak if God's given you something to say. Speak this morning. Speak. Don't be afraid. Spirit is with you. Speak. Yes, 
this, Lord. Speak. In the name of Jesus, speak. Let a holy boldness come on him, Father. Let a holy boldness for the things of your spirit come upon him. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Give him a, a praise this morning. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Church, listen to me. It's time for the gifts to return to the church. It's time. It's time. Don't be ashamed of these things that you see and that you hear. The miraculous is coming once again to God's people he has the power to part oceans let's believe again let's believe again believe again for your city and for these people this morning I love you so much I love you so much thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I'm so proud of you. Thank you for that. Amen. Thank you, guys. It's you. It's you. Okay, we're going to transition. We're a little past time, but that's okay. God did what God wanted to do. Amen. We have a business meeting downstairs with a lunch for all of you. So if you have time to stay and you want to be a part of the business meeting, please come and fellowship with us. Uh, we've got our spirits full. Amen. Now we can fill our bellies. We'll work on losing some pounds tomorrow. <laughs> I want to say I love you. God bless you. And God richly rewards you in all things. Amen? Okay. We'll see you downstairs. Amen.